Welcome on board, sailor. This is the Yorio Shaverov. I'm not gonna dig in too much on the ship's history. It's very well documented and you can read about it. I'm gonna show you a few interesting things here and there. That's 50% of the ship's heavy artillery. Four 9.2 inch guns, barrel length 46.7 calibers, mounted into twin turrets. One aft, one forward. She is also armed with 7.5 inch guns, 8 of them, mounted in 4 twin turrets. The ship's main and secondary turrets are in a hexagonal configuration. This is the rear telemetry tower. It was placed far enough from the funnels, so it was not obstructed by smoke. The ship was also armed with several 3-inch guns and other smaller guns to deal with inferior ships, but they have been removed. During her 1920s refit, she was armed with anti-aircraft weapons to deal with pesky airplanes, but they have also been removed. In fact, the only guns left are her mains and her secondaries. Notice the small dents on the gun. This is splinter damage taken during the Battle of Ellie. Here is another view of the main turret. You can never appreciate a big turret enough. A 3 inch gun would be mounted on it. It's a pity it's missing. That's the conning tower's interior. Unfortunately a few components are missing. It's armored and it's far behind from the funnels, so the officer working inside it would not be as obstructed by smoke. An interesting side note about the secondary gun turrets. Apparently one of them has a large gouge inside it. However, the Greek government wanted to see the ship in action urgently, and Armstrong's chief ordnance engineer considered the defect to be inconsequential, so the float turret was accepted. This is the bridge, and unfortunately, we cannot get in it. Apparently, visitors used to take small items as souvenirs, and now it's closed for everyone. Behind the bridge is the armored bridge. Seven inches of steel between you and anything that wants to kill you. Let's take a look. Just above the armored bridge we have a second conning tower, just like the one at the rear.
Notice the red and green details on the chains here. These colors are to indicate on which side of the ship you're standing on. Red means port and green means starboard. Indications like these can be found all over the ship. A 3-inch gun would be sticking out of this hatch. Notice the green light, starboard side. This is the interior of the forward main turret. A hole has been cut on its back side. Now, unfortunately, I can only film behind a curved glass. But you can clearly see how cramped it is in there. This is the slab of metal cut from the back of the turret. According to the sailors on board, it weighs 1000 kilograms. This is crew area. The crew would work, sleep and eat here. There are four places like this on the ship. Now, with a crew of 700 men and sometimes even more, I imagine it wouldn't smell very well. This is range finding equipment. If anybody knows how it works, please enlighten us. Have you ever wondered how recalling was done? A hatch like this one would open, coal would come down on bugs, and then it would be shoved to the coal bunker through these holes. It was hard work, and almost everybody on board took part in it, and then they would have to clean up, because this was their living space. This is a sneak peek of the engine rooms. Normally they are off limits, but the day I was filming a group had gotten special permission to enter and I managed to sneak in with them. I would like to apologize for the short, shaky and dark footage, but our time down there was very, very limited and I had some technical difficulties with my camera. I cannot say much about the engines though, all I know is that they are triple expansion engines made in Italy. I also think that we can see the boilers at some point, they are French Belleville boilers. I would like to go down there with someone more knowledgeable, but unfortunately the sailors giving the tour knew absolutely nothing.
it's very cramped in here with things that can seriously hurt you everywhere. Just imagine having to work here with another 20-25 men in scalding temperatures. Now that we've seen where the plebs work and lived, let's take a look at the luxuries that were afforded for the officers. Unfortunately, most of the officers' areas were behind closed doors, because just like with the bridge, small items were stolen by visitors. My camera's battery was unfortunately so very dead at this point, but you can get a general idea. The officers had way better living conditions than the rest of the crew. Averov was equipped with three submerged torpedo tubes. Now, these were removed during her 1920s refit, but we still have one torpedo. This is some bonus footage for taking the time and watching this long. Thank you. Have a nice day.